Thank you for tuning in to TTV. I'm your host, Toya, and today is Wonderful Wednesday, and we are talking about the Dial to Jane. Okay, so we are on verse 41, Observing and Nourishing Paradox. Um, but before we get started, I want to give you a little bit of background on the Dial to Jane, as well as please like, subscribe, and share. Because if you get anything out of this content, chances are someone else will as well. Also, check out the links below for my book, Tees Collection, as well as for the link for Young Living, which is an essential oil company. Um, I use the products. They're the best in the business. They don't sponsor me, but I am a distributor for them. So check out the links below. Now, let's get started. So the Dial to Chain is a book of basically proverbs or you know bits of wisdom that were passed on through the years for the past like 4,500 years. Um, the reason that I'm so interested in it and why I read this to you guys and go over it with you is because I feel like it's even though it was 4,500 years ago, the lessons that are in there are still lessons that we're trying to learn and go through today. So it's still relevant. Um, and that's part of that fascinates me with it. So that's why I present it to you so we can get that bit of wisdom together um, on this journey. And so today is, um, I know it says it's a verse, but it's not really a religious text. It's more spiritual or philosophical, you know, that kind of area. So not necessarily religious, um, even though it is verses. And they do, it does talk about the great integrity, which I take or understand to be the creator spirit. So whether you call that creator spirit, God, Yahweh, Jehovah, Allah, source, spirit, whatever you call that creator spirit, that's what I take as the great integrity. So let's get started. Um, this one is longer than last week. Because <laughs> last week wasn't nothing but what, four sentences? But anyway, so this week it is observant and nourishing paradox. So when most people hear about the great integrity, they waver between belief and disbelief. When wise people hear about the great integrity, they diligently follow its path. When ignorant people hear about it, they laugh out loud. By this very laughter, we know its authenticity. It is said that enlightenment appears dark. The progressive way appears retrograde. The smooth way appears jagged. The highest peak of revelation appears empty like a valley. The cleanest appears to be soiled. The greatest abundance appears insufficient. And the most enduring inner strength appears like weakness and creativity appears, appears as intim intimidate, intimidated. Great talent matures slowly. Great sounds are silent. Great forms look shapeless. Transcendence, squareness has no corners. The great integrity hides behind all forms, stubbornly nourishing the paradoxes that can enlighten us. Okay, that's a lot, y'all. Um, I ain't gonna lie, I don't really know how to interpret this one. <laughs> but we gonna go along with it and see what my ancestors give me as I talk to y'all out loud. Because <laughs> this one is a little different. Um, so when people hear about the great integrity, they waver between belief and disbelief. So I, I think that would be correct. Like I said, the great integrity is really considered like your, your God spirit or creator spirit or, you know, that, that energy that kind of guides everybody. The one that we base a lot of psychology behind. The one thing that um, science can't explain as far as part of something that happens naturally. We, we associate that with the creator spirit or with God. And that's what I take them to mean, the great integrity. So some people believe in it, some people don't. That's just how it is. Some people, you know, go to the extremes with it. Some, you know, go to the very depths like it doesn't exist. And so I think that's what that sentence is talking about. And when wise people hear about the great integrity, they diligently follow its path. So when you get to a certain age where you understand that there is a creator spirit, that this energy that's inside of us and inside of everybody, and you get to that point where you understand that, you try to follow it. You try to see where it's going to take you. You try to see how it, how it can improve your life or be more of your life. Um, when ignorant people hear about it, they laugh out loud. 
Well, how many times have you told people or mentioned something about, you know, us being energy beings and how we have this energy that flows through us and they laugh at you like, oh, yeah, that's stupid. That's some nonsense that that doesn't make any sense. Or if you are one that are, is religious and you go to talk about God and talk about spirit and stuff like that, they sit back and they come at you like you just sound foolish. Oh, you that Bible told type of person. Oh, I see where this coming from. And they laugh at you because they don't understand it. Um, by this very laughter, we know it's authenticity. So we know it's authentic by the fact that they even laugh at it. We, we understand that they don't understand that they don't see. Um, it is said that enlightenment appears dark. Well, that's for certain because life can get really dark before you start seeing the light. So I can agree with that. The progressive way, um, appears retrograde, man. <laughs> Well, I'm learning about retrograde now. And when they could talk about, oh, Mercury's in retrograde and all that, I might not fully understand, but I see the outcome of it and I don't like it. You know, that's when that bad stuff start keep coming at you and everything else. And I'm like, I'm done with this retrograde. We can come out of it. When are we supposed to come out of this? You know, even though I don't understand it, <laughs> not yet. But I'm, I'm like, I'm a good man. But the progressive way seems retrograde. So it seems like it takes you back. So the more you move forward, the more you come back. And I will agree with that because it seems like the more you get the understanding of life, the more you feel like you're moving forward, something will be revealed to you that takes you a couple of steps back. So I can agree with that. The smooth way appears jagged. Um, the highest peak of revelation appears empty like a valley. So smooth way up here and jagged, like it seems like some of the stuff that you come across, the concepts and things, they seem so easy. They seem like it's just a clear cut type of thing to do. But when you start doing it, it's not clear cut. It's it's not. It, it It's like they say, it appears jagged. Like you thinking one thing and it ends up coming up to something else and you going through these ups and downs when you think it's supposed to be smooth sailing. Just like the highest peak of revelation seems like an empty valley because it's like you starting all over again. Like everything I thought just went out the window because this is how it seems to be going and now I got to figure this part out. So it's like you come up and it's like, uh, nope, I'm right back at the beginning. Um, the cleanest appears to be soiled. The greatest abundance appears insufficient. So the cleanest appears soiled, you know. Take that for what it what it means, you know. Like it seems clean cut, clear cut, like everything, but it's not. It's not. <laughs> it's painful. It hurts. <laughs> you know. You got to go through the dirt. Um, the greatest abundance appears it's insufficient. So it seems like the more that you have, it seems like the more you don't have. And I think that is more towards the knowledge that we have. We get all this knowledge, and we think everything is one thing, and then we find out that everything you thought was a lie. And that this is how it really is. So it's like what you thought was insufficient. So what you had an abundance of was really insufficient. It doesn't serve your purpose. So it's it's useless. Um, the most enduring inner strength appears like a weakness. Um, and creativity appears intimidative. So like I said, the most enduring inner strength appears like a weakness. So you think you're strong, you think it is, but really we have all this trauma that's built up. We have all these issues that are underneath the surface. So we may appear to be strong. And that's why I tell people, check on your strong friends, because as strong as you may think they are, they're going through those weak periods all the time. That sometimes it's a struggle just to even get out the bed. And so to check on those people, because they're not as strong as you think they are. They're only that strong because they have no other choice. Um, creativity, creativity appears intimidative, you know, we live in that time. You know, you tell somebody it's something that you work on, the creativity, and they're like, oh, I could never do that. Oh, I, yeah, I would mess up. Oh, I'm no good at that. You know, so they get intimidated by it. Great talent mature slowly, which is true. If you have a talent for something, you you born with it or you just acquired it, it takes some time to really hone it, to really make it the best it can be. Um, great sounds are silent. Man. You don't appreciate silence until you are like until you live the life of just being around noise and being around people that have to fill the the empty spaces constantly with some kind of noise, whether it's talking or the radio or just anything. You get to a point where you start to just appreciate things just being quiet. That's for sure. Great forms look shapeless. Transcendent squareness has no corners. Um, Great forms look shapeless. 
I don't know. Y'all tell me what y'all think on that one because honestly, I don't know. I don't get nothing out of that one. But transcendent squareness, transcendent squareness has no corners. So to me, that just basically means that transcendence, there's no walls around it. It's limitless. Like you can just, you can trans transcend to the next level. You can get to a, a better place no matter where you are. And there's no limits to how far you can go. Um, the great integrity hides behind all forms and stubbornly nourishing the paradoxes that can enlighten us. So the great integrity hides behind all forms because it is in everything. It's that creator energy. It's the thing that fuels everything. Everything that we come in contact with, that's where that energy comes from, that creator energy. So it nourishes everybody and it enlightens you. If you understand it's there and you can see it, then it's going to enlighten you and just make your life better. <laughs> so anyway, that's my interpretation of what this meant. Um, like I said, if you figure out something for great forms, look shapeless. That one, um, I didn't get anything from that. If you got something from it, leave it in the comments below. Let me know what you thought on that one because I ain't getting nothing out of that one. But that's it for today. Again, this was 41, Observing and Nourishing the Paradox. So I love you and I will talk to you tomorrow. <laughs>